Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Hey, Thomas, what's going on? Uh, so we're here. We made it. We've got a uh, playtest up and running. You can download and play the game right now. It is completely free. If you jump over to the Steam page, you can play the game right now. We've got um, some exciting things in this playtest. We're testing out the ability to upload levels, which was only just put into the game. Uh, we had it in the game, but you weren't able to do it from the actual save menu. So we've got that implemented. Uh, you can now upload your own levels. So pretty exciting. We're going to be testing that throughout the weekend. Playtest goes until the 11th. Um, just gave an extra day, so through Monday. Um, and we're really excited to see what kind of levels come out of this. People will create some cool stuff. Uh, the playtest only just launched uh, this afternoon, so I don't know if we have any levels. I haven't really checked to, uh, to really check out. But um, just to show what we've got going on here. Uh, if you go to Browse Dungeons, you can check out any of the levels that have been uploaded. So this is all of the uploaded levels. You can kind of browse through them. This UI isn't final. We're going to be putting some uh, of our own touches on it, but this is what we have so far. I put up a couple this morning. Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll check those out. And real quick, just to show how the upload feature works. So you can, uh, you know, resize your dungeons however you want here. Move your character around wherever you want them to start. And add things from the menus here. These little cycle buttons, little uh, white arrows will cycle the different variants of different objects. So it's important to note. Um, but let's jump in. I'm just going to show you how to upload this, this level that's not even a level. Let's put a... Uh, Let's make it a very small level here. Okay. Defeat the slime to win. Sample level. To show off up I'll probably end up deleting this level later, but just wanted to show how this works. So you'll see uh, this upload button is now here. Usually a good idea to save first. Then hit upload and you will see dungeon is being uploaded. Upload success. So now if we go out here, you can do it from my dungeons. I like to do it from the main menu. So if I click browse dungeons, I have to give it a minute to load. There it is. Defeat the slime to win. So at this point, all you got to do to uh, download it is click the subscribe button, which you can either do from here or if you click on the level, you can do it from up here. So I'll hit subscribe and you'll see defeat the slime to win was successfully downloaded and installed. So if I come out here, go to my dungeons, these are all my local dungeons. You're going to see that I have the version I saved locally earlier, and then also the version that I just downloaded. And the little cloud icon, it's to tell you that uh, it was a downloaded level. And we can play it. All right, short and sweet. If anybody can beat my world record of 17 seconds, I challenge you to do so. Yeah, the feature has been working pretty well so far. We're excited to see some levels get uploaded over the weekend. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna check out these levels that Thomas made. We've got a test of your reflexes. 
And you'll notice there's these tags on the levels too. You can actually set tags um, so that you can filter through levels. So for example, Thomas tagged this one with hard. So if I look for hard difficulty levels, you'll see that's the only one with that tag. So I can kind of filter things that way. But let's download these. So I'm going to subscribe to both. And then if I go to my dungeons, I've got them. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, the uh, the tags aren't implemented yet. But if you have tags you want applied to your level, uh, just message us in Discord and we'll get them added on there. Yeah, I forgot. We're still working on that. All right, this level is called A Test of Your Reflexes. Let's check it out. Oh my god! <laughs> Why would you do this? <laughs> no! Oh no, we still got that bug with the... falling in the pit when you take damage. Invincible. Yeah, we'll get that fixed. It keeps popping back up. All right, we got the bow now. Ooh, bombs, lantern, okay. We're fully equipped. Oh no. Okay, warthogs are easy because they'll run off the edge. Grab that to speed up. Okay, so ghosts are interesting because you can kill them with the lantern if they're in their devil form. It looks like a ghost is still there. Do you see this right here? That's interesting. It's like barely visible. with this ghost up here okay so yeah it was good it just uh something happened to it let's take this guy out okay so we made it through this room oh that's it we did it woo <laughs> gg nice short little level i like it All right, uh, Tao, Tao Hao, Tao Hu meets Zelda. Let's check it out. Eh, nice. Oh no. So yeah, the, uh, the fire from these statues can actually trigger these up and down blocks. Oh, I'm invincible again. That was a little chaotic, but that was fun. Tao is a famous Blood Hell series. Oh, okay. Very nice. All right, it looks like I have all of these downloaded, so for a couple. So I want to upload a couple of my levels. So what I'm going to do 
Um, they are in a different folder because they are part of the normal Super Dungeon Designer, so let me copy those over really quick. Give me one second, and then we're going to upload them so other people can check them out. So dungeons, owned, and then date modified. Okay, let me see. There's one dungeon in particular. Is this it? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna copy this one over. Okay, Let's see if it shows up in the list here. Refresh. Okay, yeah, so this dev stream dungeon that um, we worked on uh, last stream, I want to edit a couple things and then we're going to upload this level. So, one issue we had was you could get stuck here. We're just going to delete one of those pots, both sides. Let's put some hearts in those too. And then add an unlevel tile. Okay, so the plan with this level is to just keep adding to it. So I'm gonna upload it and then we're gonna keep working on it throughout more dev streams and then just keep uploading it. And what'll happen is it'll actually overwrite uh, the previous upload. So it won't like create another level every time you hit upload, it'll overwrite the previous one. So you can update your dungeons as you make changes. So I think I already saved. Uh, let's give this one a fun name, maybe. The never ending dungeon because we're just going to keep adding to it. Okay. Dungeon successfully uploaded. Looks like if you have a long name, the text on that box gets cut off a little bit. I want to fix that. And you just got to give the server a minute to update. previously deleted that one I just undeleted it oh might take a minute to show up okay let's go to the uh, main menu here it's a bigger dungeon so it's sending more data so it might just take a few seconds here
Dungeon is currently awaiting activation. Okay. Maybe it's because of the way I copied it, because I copied it out of... Okay, yeah, let me know. Uh, in the meantime... We could play through some other fun levels. So, Arcane Chambers is a level that you can download online. And uh, this level is made by Matt, and it's a nice level. It shows off a lot of the features of the game. It's got a nice design to it. All right, we got our sword. I forgot I led the bats over here. Whoops. All right, picked up some hearts. No harm done. We got a key. Bet you if I step on this switch, the doors are going to close. Yep. Looks like those bats had some money. Got some gold. We need a key for this door. Okay, we've got some blocks here to push on these switches. And there's our key. Before I go back into that door though, let's explore a little more. Hey Danny, what's up? Thanks for swinging by, man. How you doing? Stopped in to see what you got going on in the Squish Labs. Nice. Yeah, our playtest started today. Uh, so the game is up to download and play. And we got the upload feature in, so you can upload your own levels. Like from in-game. So exciting stuff. So the level I uploaded is live, so we'll go check that out. Um, I almost have this level beat. So. so 
Never ending soda. I'm wearing my home star shirt right now. Nice. <laughs> I don't remember that quote. <laughs> Did I quote from home star himself? Double ending soda. Ah. All right, I think this goes to the boss, which for this room is a bunch of ghosts. Oh yeah, I gotta go back, okay. So now I have the gold bomb bag, which gives you unlimited bombs. I think we have to go up here first. Ooh, I want that gold. So if something falls over a pit, your sword can pick it up. Okay, so we made this stone up here. So we're gonna move it onto the switch, which makes these spikes go down. So now we can get through here. Get some treasure. And a heart container. Oops. Uh-oh, that's not good. <laughs> I might be... Oh, no, I can get out through the other door. Okay. Okay, so we lit that one. Now I want to light this other torch. This guy down here. And one change, and I really like this idea we were talking about. I forgot who brought it up. Um, but making it so that when the flame enemy is chasing you, he moves faster. That way you can kind of like lure him around a little easier. I like that idea. Alright, so we got the boss key. And we can go back here here, but I don't think we need to. I did. Okay. Yeah, that was Matt's idea. Hey, Matt. Thanks for swinging by. How's your night going? Okay, we gotta go around. Let's take all these guys out. Did I do anything back here? No, okay. Might as well take this guy out too, right? Oh, a chest. Can 
Can't complain? Okay, good. No news is good news. All right, I think I locked myself out of this room. <laughs> Whoops. I might have to restart. That's okay, our other level is uploaded. You can check that one out. Yeah, my bad, okay. So if you remember earlier, I uploaded the never ending dungeon. I couldn't go around, the door was closed. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> so what I did, I accidentally triggered the room and then walked through the door, like, right as the spikes were going up. Yeah, it was, a, uh, it was just a bad, bad timing on my part. <laughs> Alright, but yeah, you can see this level's been uploaded. So I'm gonna hit subscribe. And you'll see the dungeon has been downloaded and installed. If I go to my dungeons, here it is. And I can hit play. So before I play through this dungeon, because I've already played it, we played it on the last stream. I want to go over the tool again really quick, because we might have some new people here uh, who haven't seen the game yet with our uh, playtest starting today. So uh, this is Super Dungeon Designer. It lets you build your own top-down like Zelda-style dungeons heavily inspired by games like Zelda, Mario Maker, uh, that kind of uh, gameplay style and design style. Uh, you can make dungeons however you want. So as you can see, I can resize this room any size I want to. I can add more rooms on, and it's all point and click. It's all very simple and intuitive. I have uh, two menus here. This left menu lets me add items into the level. And then this right menu lets me decorate the dungeon and add doors, things like that. So if I want a way to transition from these two rooms, I can cycle through these different variants of the door. I'm gonna pick the closed door, put that right here. And you know, I could decorate the floors a little bit if I wanted to. And another feature, you can change the color of, of tile sets. So maybe I want a little bit of green here in the middle. Maybe one of these walls will be green. It's an accent wall. And then where the game really shines, skull floor room. Ooh, it's gotta be red, right? <clears throat> So we'll have this big menacing skull square, and then there's gonna be this little guy. Terrifying, right? So where the game really, sh really shines is the linking system. So this is where you can trigger events in the game. So um, it's all point and click. If I click on this little magic wand icon, and I click on an object, you can see this little arrow pops up. Whatever I click on now is what is going to be triggered when that enemy is defeated. So if I click on this door, now when that enemy dies, that door will open. And I can test this really quick by just hitting play. Oh yeah. Oh, and you know what? I need a weapon. So let's put a sword down. And uh, the ghost enemy is really cool. It will chase you when you hit it. And it's invincible. I can't damage it and it just takes three hits to defeat. But if I have the lantern item, when it's in a, that devil mode, I can actually kill it in one hit. And there we go, door opened. So, and there's a lot more to it. Um, there's a lot of depth if I want to, you know, make it so that maybe you've got to light all of these torches before the ghost will appear. All I have to do is group these torches together. Then I can link from any one of them to the ghost. And now that means everything in the red has to be taken care of. In this case, the torches have to be lit in order for that ghost to appear. And then we can put down a treasure chest here. 
Put the lantern item inside of it so that you have a way to light those torches. And then maybe just put down like a bat and a blob, slime. And we'll uh, group them together too. And we'll link them to the chest. So now you have to defeat them for the chest to appear. It's that easy, right? Took seconds. Active room's been having issues since I fixed that one crash. Yeah. It happens. Game is still in development. We've got some bugs. So, as you can see, it is now dark in the room, and that's because I added those torches. Ah. And as soon as we pick up this lantern, you're going to see my light radius increases. And now this lantern is a usable item. So I can use it to light these torches. And each torch you light is going to light up the room a little bit. Until you reach four. Once you've lit four torches, you're at max light for the room. And now we've got this ghost. And like I said earlier, you can kill the ghost in one hit with the lantern. So I'm going to hit it once. And then lantern. There we go. So super easy. You can trigger these series of events really easily by just point and click linking things together. And there's all kinds of ways to trigger links. You have all kinds of items. You have all kinds of objects. You have switches. You have switches that um, can be turned on and off. We've got spikes that go up and down. We've got spike traps. We've got triangle blocks that rotate and reflect arrows, stairs, checkpoints, warp points up and down blocks, pushable blocks. So you can make block puzzles with the uh, floor switches, all kinds of cool stuff. Now, if you're jumping into the um, the uh, play test for the first time, uh, there's an FAQ on our Steam page that you can check out. Um, it's gonna give you tips and, and, and all that if you run into trouble. Uh, but if you jump right in, uh, there are tool tips on every object, so if you hover over you can see the different tool tips, what everything does. So that's really helpful for kind of understanding enemy behaviors, what items do, and what different things are. Uh, this menu here is the starting equipment menu. <laughs> Lantern, Teen Girl Squad. <laughs> uh, so this, if you click this blue button, you can edit the starting equipment. So this is where you can give the player different health that they start with. And you can like auto equip them with items. So like, you can give them the sword from the start and give them any kind of ammo you want. So you can give them some arrows to start with or some keys, some bombs. And then this is also where you add more players. So if I hit this button, because uh, the game supports up to four player local co-op. So if I hit this button and add in all these players, I can also change their starting location. So by default, they're kind of all grouped together. But if I wanted, I could have player two start in this room. And, you know, maybe the other players have to go rescue player two. Or player two can start way across the dungeon and, you know, work, you know, together to trigger, you know, links and things to help each other through the dungeon. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, a lot of fun. It's all local co-op, but you can play over Steam Remote Play together. So we do have that. We've tested that feature out. Um, it works as well as... Steam Remote Play Together works. There's occasional lag just from the server and, and all that, but otherwise works pretty good. And then you'll notice this shared inventory checkbox. So by default, uh, the inventory is shared for all players. So if player one picks up the sword, then player two, three, and four are all gonna have a sword. If you uncheck this box for your level, then each player is gonna have their own inventory. So if I pick up the sword and I'm player one, only player one's gonna have the sword. So you can kind of, you know, make some cool puzzles that way. You know, maybe a player way off far in the dungeon finds a bow and then they're your, your archer now and they've got to take care of all the switches that are across pits and take out the enemies that are far away. And it kind of um, gives players roles and kind of makes some players feel important. So kind of a cool feature, something you can do. Um, and then the co-op is also drop in, drop out. So if I hit play here, and I'm actually going to give us some light so we can see. I'm just gonna put a couple torches down because otherwise the room will be dark, so. 
uh, there we go. You can see we've got um, all four players in the level to start with. Now what we can do is we can uncheck these boxes here. And right now these boxes, these little check marks are here. You might notice they look a little out of place. This probably isn't going to be their final resting point. We're probably going to put them in a menu, uh, like in the save menu somewhere. But uh, this is where you can set if the players are required. So player one's always required. But if I uncheck these for two, three, and four now when I hit play, you're going to see only player one spawns. And then if I hit the little tilde button, the little uh, squiggly line that's underneath the escape key, I can add more players in. So it's drop in, drop out. And then if I hit shift tilde, I can remove those players. So kind of a fun like arcade type experience, right? Like you can just add in players to your level. And it's totally up to the designer of the level, right? Like if you made a level where it makes sense to allow up to four players, this is probably a nice feature. If you made a level where like you need four players, like the puzzles and, and traps and things are designed around it, then you can set that restriction by not letting the drop in drop out by just saying, check here, okay, all these players are required. Yeah, the quick keys are kind of cool. And it goes down, right? So if this is like player one and two are required, you have to have two players in order to beat the level, but three and four are optional, you can add them in. Then I would just click here, and now player one and two spawn automatically, and I can add in player three and four. Uh, to end a level, you put down this tile right here. This is the end level tile. So when a player steps on this, uh, the level ends. So wherever you put that is up to you and you can design puzzles around it however you want. Pretty stoked to get that drop in, drop out feature. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Um, again, the stuff on the right menu is to like design and build the dungeon. So we've got all of the, all of these items here. The pits are just what they sound like. Pits that you can't go across, the player will fall into them. So really nice to use with like switches. So you can't reach a switch, you need to like hit it with a bow and arrow or something like that. Poison. If you walk over poison, you take damage. Um, yeah, and then you can design the rooms, you know, you have the flexibility to say I want to make a room that isn't a square. I can delete these walls and then put down walls of my own, make it any shape I want. And I usually like to delete these tiles here just so that they turn black when you hit play. Yeah, now I've got this, you know, little alcove here that I created. And again, this little cycle button is going to change through the different variants of an object. So if I want to put down a locked door here, I can do that. And then the player just needs a key to open that door. <laughs> Rooms are limited to two dimensions. Yes, that is worth noting. <laughs> this 2D game is limited to 2D. So now that I have the key, I can go through this door. And you'll see that, you know, when you have more than one player, it goes into split screen when you uh, leave a room. So you can uh, change that if you want. Um, you can set it to default to split screen right when you start, if you want. Or you can have this kind of uh, camera where if the players are all in the same room, um, it's gonna get rid of the split screen. It could be a little jarring, so in some scenarios you might wanna set the force split screen. Hey, Res Lily, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. How's your night going? So let's go back out here. And we can show off some more of the features. So if you look at... And I'm actually going to remove the extra players for now. But we have uh, boss doors as well. So if you put down a boss door... You will need a boss key. 
I'm gonna put a boss key here. And really cool animation for opening the, the boss door there. And, um, you know, functions similarly to a normal door, but it requires you to use the boss key. Hey, Sean, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, man. Thanks for the follow, Sean. <laughs> Uh, long overdue, but thank you. <laughs> the lighting on the poison looks rad. Yeah, that is really cool. Uh, for those that don't know, Sean is on our team. He's, uh, he helps out with our uh, marketing and uh, website. Yeah, that's awesome. Look at that. So cool. And then uh, there's decor, too. So we have some decorations just to kind of like spice up your level no sean was not following <laughs> everyone tease sean <laughs> he never uses twitch that's okay we'll give you a pass so you could put carpet down wherever you want like a fancy little carpeted room and then we've got these nice fountains that you can put down tombstones We have uh, these little cracked pillars and normal pillars. And we've got a, plans for a lot more decorations. We actually have the art in for a lot of them, too. I am his girlfriend. I could use him. Oh, hey, Megan. <laughs> Boo this man. <laughs> yeah, Bouchon. <laughs> Everyone knows Sean in the chat. This is great. Um, so you can add, if you um, change the color palette here, so like let's say I go to like this blue color palette, and then I add a new room, it's going to add the room in that color, which is kind of nice. So it gives you a nice starting point if you want to make a different colored room. Um, people seem to like to use the yellow room to make like a treasure room. you can do pretty easily. Uh, grates. Grates are decorative too. Just kind of look nice. And then we have uh, bombable walls. So I didn't really show off bombs yet, but um, Bombs can blow up certain objects. So if you give the player some bombs. Our cats are boring, booing too. <laughs> Meow, boo. So here's the cracked wall. If I use a bomb on that, you can see it opens up. And then I can also bomb these cracked blocks here. Maybe you hide some treasure there. Booing me, not the game. They love Super Dungeon Designer. Oh, good. Okay. Well, as long as as long as your cats love the game, then this has all been worth it. That's all we want is for your cats to like the game. <laughs> cats can't play video games, Sean. They don't have thumbs. Nice. We've got the commercial slogan down. It's the cat's meow. Uh, another thing to show off is up and down blocks. So we have those working in the game here. So if you do, you know, something like this and then give the player a bow.
<laughs> very advanced accessibility options, yeah. Paw controllers. It's important. So now if I want to get past these down blocks, I can hit the switch. You go past. And so the up and down blocks are kind of neat because they're independent of the linking system. The, when you hit that switch, it just affects every single set of up and down blocks in the entire dungeon. So if you have up and down blocks in a room, five rooms away, they're gonna switch states when you hit that uh, switch. So another great puzzle making tool. Uh, we have tables, which you can put items on, and you can break them with your sword. There's just a lot of stuff. It's hard to really showcase everything in this game. So, break those with three hits. And then what's cool is once you break it, you can walk through the middle, too. Alright, so we've kind of monkeyed around a little bit. Let's see if... Uh, I'm going to guess we don't have any new levels, but let's check it out. Nope, we still have Defeat the Slime to win. I just uploaded this one, Never Ending Dungeon. Looks like it has a couple downloads. Let's see, what's our most downloaded level? If we go to Popularity. Uh, okay, that's based on rating. So is it... So, Subscribers. So if we go to Subscribers... Brisk Jog seems to have the most downloads. I think it's the pixel art. People want to play it. Oops. I always do that. I actually hit this X to get out of here. <laughs> then we have High, Rainbow Road. And the rest are all kind of tied. Oh. Oh, it goes... Yeah, actually, I don't know why it like goes down to one that has two, but. Oh, it's not showing subscribers. It's showing four subscribers, two downloads. Ah, I don't know. All right. Um, Let's play through, here, hang on. Do I have? Do I have buried those? Okay, let's go ahead. So this never ending dungeon, this was the one that we made on the stream last time. So just to kind of show some of the more advanced linking that you can do, I'm gonna hit edit. So this is a big dungeon we made. I think, where do we start? Uh, right here. So we've got this room that you can go through here. A little push block puzzle. So when you push all three of these blocks, um, these slimes will appear. And then you can get to this chest to get the sword, kill both of these guys. Come in this room, get the lantern. And then you can see there's a bunch of stuff linked together here. We have a hidden chest with 100 gold that won't appear until you push all four of these blocks. And then this chest won't appear until you hit all of the switches in the room. And yeah, a bunch more cool scenarios like that. I like this room. There is a... Um, oh, it's this room. So there's a hidden warthog switch. So the warthog enemy is really cool. It will destroy any cracked things in front of it. So if you have cracked blocks or a cracked wall, it'll plow through them. It'll blast open cracked walls. It's a powerful guy. He can also trigger switches. So if he runs into this orb switch, he'll trigger it. So 
you have to stay out of his line of sight so you got to avoid these skull uh, tiles and go around otherwise all these archers are going to spawn and yeah let's uh let's play the level really quick i'll show you guys what it's all about we made this on stream it probably took like a half hour it wasn't it's uh, really quick and easy to uh, make levels in this game. So you can see all these events are triggering. We kill both of these slimes. And I like to hit them into the pits. Because it kills them in one hit. That's up here, I'll take them out. Take out the green boy. And then move each of these, which will make a treasure chest appear. And I'm going to light all of these. <laughs> James, I like to commit war crimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know. And then let's go up here. So we got the lantern. Can light these light these torches here. And the ghost enemy's cool if you hit it. Goes into devil mode and then you can kill it in one hit with the lantern. Otherwise it's invincible. If you don't have the lantern, you have to run until it turns back. <laughs> Pretty sure that's against the Geneva Convention. I can finish lighting this room. I don't remember if I did anything with it. No. Okay. And we have a heart container. So you'll see I have three hearts right now. If I grab that, I have four. There's an unlit torch here. I'm going to light that. Make a treasure up here. Just wait till he gets his hands on the poor blue slimes. I genuinely feel bad about the blue slimes. Like they just like cower in fear from you. <laughs> They're not doing nothing wrong. Alright, so this is the room where I need to avoid these skulls. So if I go around... I'm fine. But just to show how the linking works, I'll go ahead and trigger it. So if I walk through here, you'll see these guys appear. But I can quickly knock them. And then same with this skull, I gotta walk around get bombs. I'm going to go ahead and trigger this one too. Just to show it off. Okay, so use the bomb to destroy that cracked wall. You can go in. I've got a bunch of cracked blocks I can take out. And some more bombs in case I need them. And you'll notice that this warp pad is not working. Once we destroy all these blocks, we have it linked to the warp pad, so it activates, and now we can teleport out of here. And we've got a statue enemy. And statues are kind of cool. They um, normally take five hits to kill with the sword, but a bomb does four points of damage to them. So if you hit it with a bomb and then hit it with your sword once, you can take them out easy. And I'll bomb this wall, and we are actually back at the beginning. But we have bombs now, so we can go through this wall on the right. And we've got lots of statue enemies to take care of in this room. bombs on that guy and then one more here we're at full hearts so we don't need those hearts but they will stay there they don't fade away or anything so if I get hit I could come back and get them later ah. 
All right, so in this room, I need to use the archers. So the lizard enemy, when you're in front of it, it'll shoot an arrow at you. Now, normally they can wander around, but because they're surrounded by pits, they're just gonna stand there. So I can use their arrows to light these, uh, or to activate these tor or, uh, orb switches. So there's one there. I'm gonna activate this one down here, this one up here, and then this one right here. That makes a chest up here, which I can open to get a bow, which means now I can take these guys out. Which opens the door. And that's our level so far. Not too bad. We're going to keep adding to it. Um, not today, but in the future. At future dev streams. So if you want to help, you can jump in and give us some ideas for the level. I love that fall animation. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. I like the noise too. So yeah, again, our uh, playtest just started today in the afternoon. So wasn't expecting a lot of levels to be up there yet, but uh, hopefully people jump in through the weekend, get some levels uploaded, and we can all play each other's levels. It'll be a lot of fun. We have a handful already uploaded for you to check out. Um, some that I really recommend, like Buried Delves is really fun, Portals and Pits, um, Dark Crypt, uh, brisk Jog. Um, Test of Your Reflexes was really fun. If you're looking for a funny uh, two-player level, I have Warthog Sweeper. So I mentioned earlier the uh, Warthog enemy can destroy cracked blocks. So where is it? Two-player... Here it is. Okay. So, obviously I only have one player, so I'm going to win, but you just kind of have to like dodge the warthogs, destroy all these blocks, and then when you destroy all the blocks, the door is going to open. Ah. So it's kind of a race to see who can destroy all the blocks first. And I'd probably give the player a few more hearts to be a little more lenient here because I've already died twice. And yeah, the Warthogs won't damage each other, so you can let them run into each other. It's fine. There we go. Okay, we got in. So now in this room, I have a heart piece. And then when I step on this, whoops, um, that'll actually block player two from being able to get their heart piece. So it's like a little, little congratulations for destroying all the blocks. And each room gets a little harder. So here we've got these poison floors that'll damage you if you walk on them. And then the rough part is if you die, you gotta walk all the way back into the room. So you lose time, the other player could catch up. This was super fun to play together. Yeah, it was. Nah, no checkpoints. That's how you punish the player for dying. They gotta run back. Maybe like after this room, a checkpoint, maybe something like that. Oh shoot, I gotta redo these um, warp pads because we. this is an old level, so I needed to replace the warp pads. But you get the gist. Yeah, that's, that's the problem with... <laughs> these are playtest dungeons, not 
super dungeon designer dungeons because I have a different folder directory for my playtest. So these are all the old levels from the last playtest. They're not like newer levels from that folder, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we'll play one more level and then we're going to um, end the stream. So let's jump in. Let's see, what do we want to play? Um, anybody online that wants to try Steam Remote Play together? We could try that. Maybe do uh, Buried Delves. Or what's another good... Okay, Thomas said sure. Okay. Make sure I've got the latest. All right, I'm going to invite Thomas to some remote play. Okay, looks like you got your controller. Cool. I'm always nervous to test this feature because you never know how it's going to work. <laughs> um, okay, are you in? If you move your mouse, does it move the mouse? Or I guess it probably wouldn't, right? Let's just see if it works. We'll go to two player. Hey, all right, cool. So yeah, so Thomas is player two, I'm player one. So he's going to the right, I'm gonna to go to the left here. All right, I got a key. You need some help over there? Oh, nope, apparently not. Nice. All right, hang on to that bomb. So in this level, we actually have a shared inventory. And again, you can change that. If you don't want the players to have a shared inventory, you can set it so that everyone has their own. Oops, I, uh, <laughs> I think I attracted an arrow that hit Thomas as soon as he walked in the room. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about that. Right, we got a key. Should we use our bomb? What do you think? I'm going to use it. Okay, so Thomas is going to that room, so I'm going to go over here. Take out these bats. We should, uh, sometime, we should go for the two-player world record on this level. Just split up and figure out the best strategy. Alright, slimes are going in the pits. Okay, so I'm in this room here where we get the lantern. Okay, so we have the lantern now. I'm going to use it to light these torches. Which lets me out. And I can break this table to get that gold. Okay, I think Thomas is up here. So I'm going to come in and help him. Yeah, let's uh, we can use some of our bombs, I think. Whoa! Nice. Okay, we got the boss key. Now we're gonna go over here. Ah, this, ah, the spikes don't work good when there's two players. No! <laughs> Dang it. I got stabbed. 
That's all right. Uh, I'll wait for you here. So Thomas is going to grab the bow. So those are proximity spikes. When you step on them, they will uh, jump up. But since we have two players, he stepped on them, and then I was walking behind him, and I <laughs> took damage. So here, this is kind of cool. This is a triangle block, and when you hit it with an arrow, it'll reflect the arrow and let you, uh, you know, hit switches like that. So when Matt made this level, he made it so that all these lizards will spawn when you grab the bow, I think. So since you have to navigate back through the level, it makes you um, come back through here and, and do something. So uh, this room, we have a puzzle we have to solve. And I think we have everything. You got the key from there, right? Yeah, I think we're good. So we can push this block. And then if we, I'll let you do the honors. So now we can go up here and push this. And then that spike goes down and then Thomas can push that block there. And then when we step on there, we solve the room. And then there's a secret down here, this little cracked wall. You go in there, you can grab a heart, which Thomas will selfishly grab for himself. All right. So now in here, uh, so we don't have like full on normal boss battles in the game yet. We're uh, actually working on that pretty soon. So for this room, what Matt did is just filled it with enemies. So you'll see as soon as we step on this switch up here, a bunch of enemies are gonna appear. There they are. And uh, we're ready for it. We've got, you know, bombs, we've got arrows, we've got our sword. We're gonna be okay. And we've got two players. That helps too. Nice. So there we go. We get all the gold. And you'll see, like, as we get further away, the camera just kind of, like, zooms out. So you can have, you know, four players on the screen and it'll zoom out to get everyone if you're in the same room. And if you have that feature enabled, you can set it to force split screen from the beginning if this is like too jarring to like go in and out of the rooms. But otherwise, yeah, we did it. GG. Well played, Thomas. Six minutes, 10 seconds. Not too bad. It's a pretty fast time for this level. Right. Do you want it? Want to do uh, one more? Want to do some some uh, warthog sweeper? <laughs> He's switching on his tab. It's very jarring. Oh uh, yeah. Needs a sound effect. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like a. Up for some sweeper? All right, let's do it. One room Warthog sweeper, multiplayer edition. Here we go. So it's me against Thomas. Again, we're trying to clear out all these blocks. Whoever does it first. There's a little bit of RNG involved. There's, uh, you know, you got some Warthog RNG going on, but that's okay. Whoever the Warthog favors will win. Come on, go to the right, go to the right, go to the right. Okay, I died, that's okay though, we're in the first room. I wanna keep my hearts so close. Come on, come on, two more. Yes. Okay, so I got that heart. So now when Thomas comes through here, you're gonna see 
he won't be able to access his heart, so I get an extra heart piece. Although it looks like he actually started with four hearts and I didn't, so... Oh no, you know what? We have shared inventories on, so when I pick up a heart, he gets it too, <laughs> I think. So actually, I gotta fix that. Okay, I'm letting him catch up a little bit. Now you don't want to die now because if you die here, you got to go all the way back and then run up, but you had a disadvantage. Uh, shoot, yep, I knew, yep, okay, dang it. <laughs> okay, it looks like he died too, so I'm okay. Okay, we got that. And one more here. We gotta get get out of there. Come on! No! No! Dang it! <laughs> oh no, he might pull the lead now. That's not good. Okay, he died too. We're okay. Yeah, it gets hard with this this room. I think we need to let Oh no, we did it! Oh, we forgot to fix the thing! <laughs> Dang it. Okay, you win. <laughs> I totally forgot, and that just happened to us, too. I think, was that the end, or was there one more room? Let me see. Uh, oh yeah, I did have uh, one more room here, where um, we're actually in the same room, clearing out the, the things. Yeah, GG. It's uh, it's more fun than you expect it to be. I, I like the, the competitive level. It's really good. All right. Well, it is 930. Um, I got to have some dinner. So I think we're going to wrap things up there. Um, but big thanks to everyone that came and watched the stream. We actually had, um, I think, seven viewers at one point, which sounds silly but that's like one of the biggest amounts of viewers i think we've had on the stream so thank you all um playtest is running through the weekend uh you can get to the steam page from down below it is totally free you can jump in upload levels have fun and we will be happy to play them if you want to jump in the discord we'd be happy to play the levels with you if you want to try out co-op um just post in the channel that you're looking for someone to play with uh we'll be happy to play with you um, and we'll be happy to play your levels too if you want some feedback or just want to you know get excited and talk about some of the new features uh, our discord link is down below you can click that to jump into our discord again that's where we're sharing levels that's where we're chatting trying to build a community um, game we're looking to hopefully get it out by like middle of next year into early access so um, more to come lots to add to the game still but lots of features already in the game um, and yeah, we, we do our dev streams every Friday at 8 p.m. So you can always stop back here um, on Twitch to check us out. Uh, so thanks, everyone. Hope the playtest is a lot of fun. If you have any feedback, feel free to send that our way, either in Discord or contact at squishstudios.com. And I'm going to play us out with the trailer. So thanks, all. Have a good night. Have a great weekend. We will see you around.